peace. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you for Jesus for that. Thank you for that, Lord. And Lord Jesus, I just continue to ask that today go as planned, Father God. Lord Jesus, we ask for you to have your way, Father God, not our plans. <coughs> but Lord, we ask that your plans go forth today, Father God. We ask that your plans go forth today. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so worthy to be praised today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship your name today. We glorify you, Father God. We thank you for this. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the day. I thank you for this church. I thank you for this service. I thank you for everything that you're going to do in this service, Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you are God and you are God all by yourself, Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for using our pastor to bring a word that is going to edify us, Father. I thank you, Lord, that the word that you give, Father, will not come back void, but it will accomplish Everything that it was sent out to do, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I praise you for that, Father. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that the spirit of the Lord will come down in his house. It will reign. It will rule. It will set free. It will deliver. Lord, it will, it will uh, minister to us, Father. Lord, it will meet the need in our areas and our lives, Father. I thank you, Lord, for that, Father. Lord, I thank you for having your way in us and through us right now, Father. Lord, I thank you for your moving in our lives, Father, for changing in our lives, Father, for opening up doors, for shedding doors, for moving into new directions, Father. Lord, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you lead our path, Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that our steps are ordered by you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, I submit this whole church to you right now, Father. Lord, I have that the Holy Spirit have complete reign and rule right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, Holy Spirit, we give you this church, Father. Lord, we ask that you move. Lord, that minds be put at ease, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that minds be transformed, Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that, uh, that you, for you transforming our minds, Father. I thank you, Lord, for a sound mind right now in the name of Jesus, for the Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you have not given your people the spirit of fear, Father, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And a sound mind right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, as we uh, as we come to your, into your gates with praise and thanksgiving, Father, Lord, I ask that hands be lifted high, Father. Lord, that we make a joyful noise unto the Lord, Father. Lord, we submit our musicians to you, Father. Lord, we ask that you have your way in them and through them, Father. Let the glory of the Lord move through them, Father. Lord, we submit our minister, Michael, Father. Lord, we ask that you use him to lead us into the, your gates of praise, into your th courts of thanksgiving right now, Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the... I thank you, Lord. When praises go up, Father, blessings come down. Lord, I thank you, Lord. When praises go up, Father, blessings come down. I thank you, Lord, that when praises go up, Father, blessings come down. Father, I thank you, Lord, that when praises go up, blessings come down, Father. I thank you for that, Father. Lord, I thank you for that, 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 that story in the Bible, Father, that they sent the front line out, Lord. They sent out... They sent out praises on the front line, Father, and it confused the enemy, Father. I thank you for that, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that you shall move on our behalf, Father, through our praise, Father, through our worship, Father. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we worship you in spirit and in truth right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, that we worship you in spirit and in truth, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you honor. 
Lord, we give you glory for you moving in this service right now in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. of Hope Church visitors and members, both in person and online. We welcome you this morning. Please bow your heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for life as well as it is, Lord God. We thank you for your glory already falling in this place, Lord God. As people walk in, Lord God, follow them, Father, and let them be well, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for the word that will go forth today. We ask that you restore in our pastor everything that he puts out. We thank you for our first lady, sister Elisa, Malachi, and Elias, Lord God. Continue to reign on them, Father, and as they matriculate throughout the week. We thank you. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Please stand to welcome our praise team. Amen. Good morning, Generation of Pope family. Come on and stand up on your feet all over this place. If you come with a heart and a mind ready to serve the Woo! king with gladness. If you come with praise in your heart, hey. come on and bless you the, name of the, the name of the Lord this morning. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. For he's good and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Come on and say something sweet to the king. Put your hands together right here. Came to bless the name of the Lord Woo! this morning. If you came to make the name Hallelujah. of the Lord name bless this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, yeah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. 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 Hey. Sing I will bless the Lord.
glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Of the glory. Of the glory and the honor. And the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't stop dancing. Can't stop dancing. Woo. Come on and move this morning. You got to beat God for too good to you. I can't Woo. stop dancing. dancing. Hey.
Hallelujah. 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 Sing hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. God, we magnify your name, Jesus. A choir of one, we lift our voice, we raise our voice, we give you the sacrifice of praise, receive our worship. Receive our worship this morning, dear God. We pour out our hearts to you, dear God. And we thank you, we're grateful, we honor you, we magnify you. I don't know about you, but I've had some folks to turn their back on me a, a time or two. I had some very dear and close friends to turn their back on me a time or two. Yes, God. But he's been so faithful. He's yeah. never, ever turned his back on me. His thoughts toward me are always good. Who wouldn't praise a God like that? God, you're faithful and we bless your name. God, you're so faithful and we bless your name. God, you're faithful, and we bless your name, Lord. We magnify your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together right there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We magnify you this morning. Come on, if you're watching online, just take a few minutes and create an altar of worship right where you are. Come on, if God has done anything for you, just pause and take a few moments to honor and recognize the king for everything that he's done for you. Hallelujah. Come on, the Bible declares that it is our reasonable service to honor God in this way. We owe it to you, God, and we give it to you. 
We magnify your name this morning, Lord Jesus. We glorify your name this morning. We thank you and we honor you, Jesus. We magnify you. Hallelujah. He's been so good to us all week long. And we get an opportunity. Hallelujah. It shouldn't just be one day out of the week, but collectively as a congregation, we get to come together and raise a sound to the King. Hallelujah. For all that he's done for us. Hallelujah. We bless his name this morning. We thank him. We honor him because he's so worthy. He's so faithful. He's the bread of life. Come on. He's our King and our Savior. Come on. Your alarm clock went off this morning, but it was God on God all by himself. Don't you be mistaken this morning. He is the one who is all powerful. Yes, Lord Jesus. And we thank him. We honor him. We bless him. Come on. Put your hands together again one more time. Thank you, Jesus. There's such a sweet spirit in this place this morning. Come on, won't you lift your hands right in this moment? And just honor the King with your worship. Acknowledge him with your praise. Come on, thank him for all that he's done for you. All the ways that he's made for you. Come on. Come on, bless the name of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. We bless his name. He's so good to us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are my strength, hey, yes, God. strength like no other, strength like no other, it reaches to me, yeah, you are my strength, oh, Strength like no other. Hey, strength like no other. Oh, it reaches to me. Said you are. You are my strength. Strength like no strength other. Like no Like no, like no. 
blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never, never, never lose. It will never lose its power. How I many of you know about the blood of Jesus? Said it reaches to the highest mountain. Come on, if you're in a low place this morning and it flows to the lowest valley. Yeah, yeah, yes, the blood. That gives me strength from day to day. It will never, never, it will never, never, it will never, never lose. It will never, never lose its power. Somebody look down your aisle and just shout the blood. Come on. Are you? You didn't do it. I said look down your aisle and somebody shout the blood. Somebody run to three people and say, the blood cover me, the blood cover me. Go, 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 go. Now, when you get back to your seat, somebody shout, the blood. I feel like some leapers are getting ready to start leaping. And some runners are about to start running. And some folk who want to wave their hand about to wave their hand. Yeah, bye, 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 I'm sorry. Hey! Can we just give God 30 seconds of praise right here? Come on, y'all. Whoa! Whoa! Come on, let's go. One, two, one, two, three, go!
right. Listen, listen. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. I ain't really seen you move on service. You too cute. Now we up here shouting, talking about Jesus. And you you looking around like you ain't got a reason to praise him or nothing. But I want you to get loose because praises are contagious. Somebody just start clapping your hands and look at your neighbor and say, I hope you clap with me because praise is the only way you're going to get through what you're in right now. Yeah! Somebody get loose and go give God a praise. Yeah. Hey, come on, y'all. Hey. Don't you let them run by themselves. Don't you let them run by themselves. Don't you let them. Yeah. what God brought you through. You should have been dead. Old folk would say sleeping in your grave. But somebody look at your neighbor and say, I thank God that he brought me out once again. And I know you sitting here and you came to look cute. But I came to be undignified today. So excuse me if I get a little loose. But when I think back over my life, and look at what God has brought me through. I'll praise them all by myself. Somebody just start leaping in your row and say, excuse me, I got to go for mine. Go, 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 go. I said praise. I said praise. Have a little check today. Woo! Hey, 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 you know what? Yeah! Y'all better go for it. I said, y'all. Uh oh. We may not get the service back and y'all start acting like that. Y'all watch it online? This is what you do when the Holy Ghost is in the room. Yeah, and it's getting online too. Yeah.
Uh-oh. He's here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The Holy Ghost is here. Oh. 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 Be seated. Be seated now. We ain't going to be. Come on, be seated. But it seemed like every Sunday we going from glory to glory. Yeah, bye, 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 Whoa. Y'all be seated. Before, be seated. Before somebody start really reflecting. I. You know, when you walked in here today, for 10 of you who would leave up, the Lord said depression left. When you crossed through the threshold of that door, depression had to flee. Ha! That's why you felt a weight lifted from you when you came into the room. Because the devil been trying to kill a lot of you. But that's why God said, I'm going to orchestrate your footsteps to get around some praises so you can shake that devil loose. Oh, my, 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 Oh, God. Woo, we gotta stop. A second wind gonna come. Please. I'm trying to move forward. Well, since we're here, can I declare this over you? I ain't trying to make nobody else shout. But the Lord says, I'm going to give you back seven times. Seven times what you lost. He told me to declare that over you that you're about to get seven times back what you lost. I just need at least 20 people that would say, I stand in agreement with that word. Oh, God. I, I, okay, we may not get the service back, but just shout on that word if you believe. God's going to give you seven times back. Somebody shout seven, 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 seven times more money, seven better friends, seven new business ideas, seven new connections, seven new investments. Somebody leap and shout seven. Come on. Jumps. Wait a minute. He said leap seven times. Somebody shot, it's done! It's done! Yeah! Woo! Be seated, be seated. And your latter days, your latter days shall be greater. Come on, somebody say, my latter days shall be greater. Ooh, 
I feel that. My latter day shall be greater. Amen. Look at somebody who don't look sleepy and say, you ain't seen nothing yet. If you thought God blessed me before, you ready? You ready? Wait until August 1st. I don't know who that's for. Oh! But I hear the Lord said, wait until August 1st. Not only is it the eighth month and the eight is a number of new beginning, but it's going to be a fresh start for you. Somebody turn around and say, it's all starting over. Come on. It's, everything is going to be made new. Come <laughs> Woo! I got to go for We lose it on that. Don't you get used to that apartment. A house is coming. Don't you get used to staying on public transportation. God's about to give you your own. Don't you get used to being sick. He's about to heal you. Oh, my man, son of a horse, don't you get used to them little nasty friends talking about you. He's going to send you some better ones. In the name of oh, yeah, yeah. Woo! 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 Hallelujah. Be seated, be seated. Amen. 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 If it's your first time here on today, please slip that hand in the air. Amen. Amen. I need some of our regular members to go and greet all of those first time guests that have their hands up. Amen. Go greet them. Amen. Come on, go greet them. Go greet them. Go greet them. Hallelujah. today. Amen. Amen. We welcome you. You ready? To the best church in the nation. Come on. Amen, somebody. You go to the best church in the nation. And members, you ought to let folk know the Generation Hope Church is the best church in the nation. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Be seated. Be seated. Amen. I want to. I want to take a moment and let's welcome uh, Sister Cheryl uh, back, who was sick on last week. Come on, clap your hand. 
Amen, somebody. We thank the Lord. Amen. Good to have you. We're praying for you. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Listen, we're going to do something before offering. We have something special we're going to do. Amen. For those of you, for our new members that have uh, completed new members class, come on, Sister Angela, as she comes on today. Come on up here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We just want to uh, honor our members that went through our new members class. Amen. Amen. And I just want to um, personally thank each and every one of them. Um, you guys made the teaching the class easy. It wasn't stressful. And so we just want to thank you on this morning. I know some of our members are not here today. They're on vacation. But um, the names are as follows. Juan Nobles, and it reads, New Member Certificate. The following award is given to Juan Nobles. He has gone through New Members class at Generation of Hope Church and has successfully completed and graduated on 7-23-23. And as I call your name, please come forward. Jeremy McLean, he's not here. Shante Mathis, she's not here. Jennifer Cox. Yeah. Woo! LaShawn Jones. Cheryl McCoy. Iona McCoy. Cynthia Ambrose. Woo. Christopher Walston. He's not here. Theo Lamar Royston. He's not here. Brother Wilbert Boyd. And Sister Chantel Knock. And our last one, Donnie Giss, but he's on vacation as well. These are all our graduates for our new members class. Let's stand and give them a hand. Hey Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's thank the Lord. All of our new members on today. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you to Sister Angela and Brother Michael for teaching our new members class. Amen. Y'all ought to thank the Lord on today. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all was looking like I ain't never got no certificate for nothing. I. You better come to new members. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, let's thank the Lord again. Amen. I think whenever you join a ministry, you ought to find out the history of the church. We go through salvation and all of these different things. And so, amen, we welcome our new members. And this is just a, a wonderful testament to those that have been coming and joining. And y'all better get ready because the day is coming where there's going to be 30, 40, 50, 60 people. We handed new member certificates out to, amen. So we require you to go through new members, and after you complete new members, then you are then will be integrated into the next steps of how you want to serve. And we got great leaders in place that are helping uh, that process come together and smoothly because a, a lot of you are extremely gifted. Do you hear me? 
and there's no need in you sitting down on your gift, huh? On your anointing, on what God has offered you, amen? You can't be gifted in this church and I not know about it. Amen, somebody. And some of you, you're going to have to learn how to come out of your shell after new members so you can get involved. Amen. You'll be amazed at how many people leave the church because nobody really acknowledged or respected their gift. We didn't even know how gifted you were. Y'all ain't going to say that to me. Amen. And that's why Generational Hope is a church where we are. Uh, we have processes and things in place. Where we are discovering your gifts. Amen. Eventually, we're going to do our gifts assessment and analysis to find out exactly what area you fit into. Come on here, somebody. If you know you can hold a note and sing, you need to get involved in the praise team. Y'all ain't going to say that to me. If you know you can play skillfully, you need to talk to Brother Quentin. Amen. If you know you're, you're nice and kind and you want to be a greeter and that's your gift, you need to see, sister. Y'all ain't saying that to me today. If you know you have a, a heart of, of just protection and giving, you need to see Brother Danny or Brother Marcus in terms of armor bearing, amen? Media, all these different ministries you can get involved in. Do you hear me? After you complete new members. Let's thank the Lord for our new members again, amen? Amen. And so our next uh, new members will be starting very, very soon. And so if you join this church and you have not gone through new members, get involved because after that, we want you uh, to get involved in this ministry. Amen. Everybody, everybody at this church that completes new members should be active. You should be active. Praise the name of the Lord. When they say ashes to ashes, dust to dust over you one day, you're going to leave depleted. That means that every gift that's in you should be have should have been used. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me here today. Every gift of ingenuity, every creativity, everything God put in you needs to be used. Amen, somebody. And don't compare your gift to other people. What God gave you, somebody say, is for you. There's nobody like you. There'll never be another like you. You walk different, you talk different, you act different. Come on here, somebody. And so we thank the Lord on today. All right? Well, let's go move forward. Amen. It is, it is offering time in the house of the Lord on today. Amen. There ought to be some hallelujahs right there. Amen, somebody. I don't know if you know this, but within this church, God is going to raise up some millionaires. I'm going to say that again because some of y'all act like I wasn't even saying nothing. I said within this ministry, look around you. Within this ministry, God's going to raise up some millionaires. Some of you say, well, Pastor Dwight, um, how is that going to happen? I'm going to show you how it's going to happen. You're going to be a faithful tither, number one. And you're going to ask God to send you to people who appreciate your value. Some of you, let's be honest, some of you recently started your own business and you've been charging so low and you charge based on how you see yourself. Y'all ain't going to say that to me. You need to raise your expectations. Look at what all you've been through and what all you're going through. Why would you go through all of that just to offer pennies? Tell somebody, I'm worth more than that. I'm worth more than that. And I want to be around people this year that can appreciate what I have to offer. Y'all ain't saying that to me today. And in order for you to get around people that appreciate what you have to offer, that means you have to get away from pawn shop mentality people. Now, you're really worth a whole lot, but because you're around people who don't know your value, they mistreat you. You ready? And then want you after you leave. Y'all ain't, see, y'all ain't never been there before. 
Somebody say, I'm worth more. Within this church, God, hear me. Hear the word. He's going to raise up some millionaires. God's going to raise up some people in this church that will be getting ready to go do stuff such as buy land and purchase different properties to edify the kingdom. We're going to have people in this church that's passed. I got that. Don't even worry. We ain't going to have to raise no money, do no fish fries. Y'all ain't talking to me. Our car washes. We're going to have one person say, All right, don't worry about it, Pastor. We're going we to help advance the kingdom. You are sitting under entrepreneurs. Me and my wife are entrepreneurs. Y'all ain't saying that to me. And that same anointing that is on us is on you. That within this ministry, within this ministry, God is raising up entrepreneurship. He's raising up people with witty business ideas. And stop thinking that what you have to offer, nobody will appreciate it. You just haven't went to the right people. Somebody in another state will love what you have to offer. You got to stop selling your business to your family. Because they always see you beneath them. Somebody say, get around some people who appreciate you. Amen, amen. So we thank God that every member of Generation Hope Church is a... Boy, y'all sound up today. Every member of Generation Hope Church is a... And anything you give above your tithe is offering. Amen? Amen. The Bible says to bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. And I will rebuke the devourer for your name's sake. That means that when you are a faithful tither, God makes sure that the enemy does not have a right to that which is yours. You do, not, you do know that during the week stuff will jump off, right? Mess around and stop paying your tithe. Car breakdown. Hot water heater go out. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Everything that could go wrong will go wrong. But when you tithe, God gives you some insurance you didn't even know you had. He says, I'm going to protect all of your assets. I'm going to protect anything your name is on when you tie. Let's do simple math. If you make $1,000 a week, how much do you owe God? $2,000. $3,000. You got it. You got it. We're giving by the following methods. Dollar sign, generation of hope. Dollar sign, Generation of Hope. If you're giving in person, there should be an envelope in the back of your seat. You can grab that envelope. If you're writing checks, you can make them out to Generation of Hope Church. Amen. Amen. When you're ready to give in person, you can come down. You can come down. If you're giving online, Dollar sign, Generation of Hope. Or you can give via Zelle, Generation Hope Church at gmail.com. Or you can text the word give that's on the screen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And at this time, we are releasing our kids for children's ministry. Amen. Amen. Parents, you get a break for about an hour. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. If you don't have nothing to give, you should still come around and touch the offering basket so that the next time the opportunity presents itself, you can give. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, dollar sign, generation of hope. You can text the word give that is on the screen. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and bless the offering. You, uh, you can come on. Still come. Still come. Amen. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessing. Bless you. Bless you. Father, we thank you for the seed that it goes toward the work and the building of your ministry in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Amen. I want to give a few announcements, and I know that at the end of service, we're going to have announcements, but let me just say this to you. Um, everyone say July 30th. Amen. It's July 30th, correct? The church picnic, July 30th, we're, we're having our church picnic. Come on, somebody. Already oh, got some more amens right there. Amen. That um, immediately after service, well, not immediately, but around 4 o'clock or so, uh, we'll be meeting at Oakhurst Park in Decatur uh, for our church picnic. Amen. We have a sign-up sheet uh, for those of you uh, that can cook. Uh, we we uh, that that's okay. I'm gonna go home in a minute, y'all. Uh, for those of you that can cook, uh, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Because everybody that signs up may not have that ministry. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. So just know if you sign your name on a list saying I'm bringing some ribs, which I don't eat, but I'm bringing some ribs, or I'm going to make some burgers, uh, make sure you can make the burgers and the ribs. Amen, folks. We we, we're coming hungry. Uh, and so uh, don't y'all cheat. Just wait. Hold off until the picnic. Amen. Brother Todd and Sister Moshe are organizing that. And we're going to wear our church T-shirts. Y'all don't remember growing up going to church picnics, do you? Amen. Some of y'all were shocked because you saw the sanctified folk playing volleyball. Amen, somebody. And, and I went to church picnic. We was playing kickball. Uh -huh. And if they rolled it too far to the right, you, you pick it up and say, roll it straight next time, sir. Get me a good shot here. Uh, that's okay, y'all. Y'all, this new generation don't know what we're talking about. Amen, somebody. Amen. Somebody asked me, Pastor, are we going to have badminton? I said, I don't know about that one. But, amen, somebody. But we will have some games. It's okay to play some games. Uh, y'all ain't going to hell because you play Uno or play some cards. Y'all ain't going to talk to me in here today. Amen. If you saved, amen. If you love the Lord, you saved. You playing, uh, you playing a game of cards ain't going to send you to hell. You're enjoying yourself. Amen. You ought to learn how to have fun in life and play some Connect Four. Enjoy yourself. Huh? Have fun. You can't sit around every day just looking sanctified like can't nobody touch you. What you doing today? Nothing just it's boring. Hey, man, you ought to go out to the movie sometime and get you some large popcorn with some butter on it if your uh, cholesterol allows it and high blood pressure. Y'all know we. <laughs> and enjoy yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. Because I'm going to be having fun. I don't know what I'm going to be doing the picnic, but I'm going to have fun. Hey, man, somebody. Somebody say July 30th church picnic. And look at your neighbor and say, I better see you there. Come on, don't you miss this good food and good fellowship, amen? Amen. You might meet your boo at the church picnic. I don't know. Amen. I ain't get no amens right there, but amen, somebody. Amen. I believe in meeting people within the church. I met my wife in church. Amen. And she over there looking uh, super, super good today. Amen, somebody. Amen. I like waking up looking at her. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me in here today. Don't you be mad because you got somebody you don't like. No, no, no. God, why'd I do this? You mess your own life up. Shoot, don't be mad at me. But take your time and choose wisely. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Uh, last announcement. Um, uh, what was that last night? Church. Oh, August 12th, we're doing our second annual gas giveaway. Amen. Our second annual gas giveaway. 
Amen. Last year we gave away gas to over, I think it was 100 cars, and we gave them $25 per tank. And listen to this. They were lined up at 6 a.m., and the gas started, it, it started at 9 a.m. The gas was gone by 9.30. All of your cousins, you didn't even know where your cousins was there. And they was lined up and then had the nerve to start fighting over free gas. One lady came in one car and came back in another. Like, we know who she was. Hey, man, and we, go, we gave her some more gas. This is our goal this year. Our goal is to give away gas to 300 cars. I'm telling you. Now, the gas giveaway is from 9 to 11, and I'm asking, huh? Uh, nine until it's gone, my wife said. And I'm, I'm asking that um, our church members would meet us at the, listen to me, the Exxon gas station um, right down the street here on Covenant Highway. It's right after the light. Uh, meet me there. Meet us, excuse me, meet us here at 7.30 a.m. on August 12th, and we'll carpool just maybe one or two cars, three cars over there so we don't have a lot of cars packed up because people, when I tell you this line is going to be all the way down Covington Highway and we are partnering with my friend attorney Justin Miller and some others and they already sponsored $3,500 uh, for the gas giveaway and so the church is going to meet them where they are and let me tell you something, I believe in giving back to the community, and a gas giveaway is an awesome way to do outreach. We're going to meet there. We're going to have on our hope paraphernalia. We're going to, listen, not only are we giving away gas, but we're going to pump the gas for them. I'm going to have at least two people per tank to pump the gas. We're going to pump, we're going to pray for them, and then pump their gas. And let them drive off. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me in here today. And so we thank the Lord. We thank the Lord that uh, gas giveaway. Somebody say August 12th. August 12th. Gas giveaway. And we're calling it Gas on God. Gas on God. I want you to understand, I did not make that up. I've seen other churches do it, but I'm so thankful that we were the first church to do it, I believe, on Covington Highway. And so we're going to keep that tradition up. And so I'm telling y'all, we're giving away that gas. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get into the word. How many are ready for the word on today? Let's stand. Let's stand. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. And when you have it, say amen. John chapter 5. It's good to see Brother Will in the back there. Hey, my brother. Amen. Somebody. Amen. Once you look at your neighbor as you turn to the word and say, you look good today. And don't be lying either. Just got the word in your hand. You better not be lying holding the Bible. Amen. Tell them you look good today. Praise the name of the Lord. Look like the Lord has kept you. <clears throat> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. John 5. Amen. Amen. Brother Elijah standing today. He came to get a word, boy. <laughs> Musician standing. Well, I, I like that. Praise God. All right, do you have it? I'm reading verses 6 through 11. And I'm, I'm going to add another installment in our series, Motives. Amen. Because this season, we are going to surround ourselves with people who have the right motive. Hiya. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. God's going to help use your, let you use your discernment because there are a lot of people that are around you that don't have the right motive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But God is going to reveal to you their hearts, amen, because your purpose is too valuable to be sharing everything God gave you with people who just want to hurt you. Amen. You ready? Somebody shout, I'm ready for the word. The Bible says in John 5, 6 to 11, it says, When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked the man, Do you want to get well? 
And sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. And while I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And at once, and the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. And the, and the day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leader said to the man who had been healed, it is a Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. You ready? But he replied, the man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and walk. I want to preach from a subject this morning and help me energize the atmosphere and look at your neighbor and just say, everybody is not against you. Uh, come on, you may be seated. Say, everybody. Come on, everybody is not against you. You may be seated. So while on vacation a week ago, uh, me and my family had a chance to walk through uh, the rainforest in Puerto Rico. And our tour guide, whose name was Alex, was absolutely uh, the best to me and my family. He was extremely helpful uh, in giving us some very rich history of the rainforest there in Puerto Rico. And as we walk through, you ready? He was naming all the different plants. And one of the plants that he introduced us to was called a sensitive mimosa. A sensitive Mimosa. Everyone say a sensitive mimosa. Come on, one more time. A sensitive mimosa. You ready? So he tapped the plant with his finger, and the plant closed. What would you say, Pastor Dwight? He tapped the plant with his finger, and the plant closed. He said, here, you try it. I tapped it with my finger, and the plant closed. My kids touched it with their finger, and the plant closed. My wife, the plant closed. And I said to him, I said, it, it's, it's, it's like it's used to closing the moment a hand gets near it. And I found out, you ready, that the plant closes when you barely touch it, because it's rapid water release from specialized cells located at the basis of the stocks. The plant, the plant is used to closing. It's a natural mechanism for the plant to close. You ready? When, when, when all of this water touches, it releases it. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Would you lift that hand for me all over the room? All over the room. I want to see them hands lifted. You ready? The Lord said to tell many of you in here today that you have to stop releasing everybody he sends to help you. Put your hands down. Look at somebody and say, everybody is not against you. That's the wrong neighbor. They're asleep. Say, everybody is not. I need you to say it. Everybody is not against you. Now somebody say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In John, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. And now there in Jerusalem, the Bible says near the sheep gate was a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethsaida. Bethesda, 
and which is surrounded by five colored colonnades. And here a great number of disabled people used to lie. You ready? The blind, the lame, the paralyzed. Fundamentally, this is a sheep, this is a pool gate where all of the sick were known to go. Brother Michael, they were known to go to this, this sacred place because um, it was said that once a year an angel would come down, touch the water, stir it up, and whoever got in the water, y'all don't read the Bible, when it was stirred would be healed. This would happen once a year, so you would have people waiting all year for one moment. I don't know who's waiting for one moment to get what God promised you. Uh, somebody say, my moment is closer than I think. Come on, my, uh, uh, my moment might be today. Don't you play with me. My moment... My moment might be when I walk out of this church. Uh, my moment might be during the service. A great number of sick people were by this pool gate. The Bible says that this man suffered from a paralytic condition for a long time. And uh, apparently, um, he was frequently at the pool gate in hope of healing. Oh, man, anybody got hope left? I, I don't see it yet, but I got a little bit of hope still. Uh, this is why you can't lose your hope, because sometimes hope is all you have left. Uh, I'm hoping it work out. I'm hoping I make it through. Uh, I'm hoping I don't fail. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here today. It was a hope that had been long disappointed, 38 years. You ready? Can we get into the text? Somebody said, let's get into the text now. Verse 6, here it is. Here it is. Jesus shows up and sees him laying there. He sees him. He sees him. Somebody just thank God that he saw you. I, I'm not talking about your cousin. I ain't talking about your mama. I'm not talking about your daddy. I ain't talking about your kids. I, why don't you thank God that he sees you? Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost right there. When Jesus saw him lying there, and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time. Here it is. He asked him, do you want to get well? <sighs> Can I give you point one? Point one. Maybe you think people are against you because God selected you. Say it again, Pastor Dwight. I didn't really get it. Um, maybe you think people are against you because God selected you. For some reason, Jesus selected this man among the great multitude of sick people. There were a lot of people there. There were a lot of people there. It was crowded. There were a lot of people there with a lot of different issues, a lot of different sick people. But God decides to select him. And Jesus was not about to conduct, hear me, some great healing service because Jesus understood that everybody um, that is around this pool gate doesn't really want me. Everybody that shows up to church don't really want me. I wish I could tell you the truth in here, but, but, but everybody doesn't want God like that. Some people came to make a business proposition. Some people came to get hooked up with somebody that looks cute. Some people came because, y'all ain't going to talk to me here. They want folk to see their outfit, and y'all ain't going to talk to me. Everybody did not come to church for Jesus. I wish I could say they were all there for him, but they weren't, Brother Boyd. Good God Almighty. He's at the pool of Bethesda. 
and he sees this man. And I want you to understand that God, y'all going to shout, if he sees this man, that means he had to look over some people to get him. Which means that when God wants you, Samario, come on, he'll skip over people to get you. And see, some of y'all, you know, you want to always walk around like you're the, you're the best thing since sliced bread. But ma'am, uh, sir, if God did not select you, he selected you. Why did he select you? He selected you because he would put what he put in you. And he would not have put all of that in you for it to go to waste. And somebody needs to thank God that he selected me. Oh, see, you need to know that there were other options. There were other choices. Don't act like you was the only choice, baby, with your cute, educated self. There were other people that were just as qualified as you, but God is saying there's something I put in you that I must select you. Somebody leap up and sit down real quick and say, I've been selected. Go ahead. Go, 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 go. He skipped over some people to get you. What is it about you? What is it about you? What is it about you? What is it about you that he wants? Oh, y'all going to help me talk today. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. So, so why do you walk around acting as if you're going to fail at everything? When the master has selected you. You upset that he didn't select you, that a boyfriend didn't select you, that a girlfriend didn't select you, that your boss didn't select you, that you didn't get selected for the position. But that none of that matters. Come on, I'll be upset if God didn't select me. But the fact that God select me means that I've been preserved and reserved for something better. I've been selected by God. And when you've been selected by God, you start developing enemies and people you didn't even know did not like you because you, you think it's your hair and your clothes and your money, but they're mad that he selected you because they thought they were the only ones that got selected. But God will select you over people to show them I got somebody better than that. Hey, somebody shot favor ain't never been fair. Don't you sleep on the fact that God selected you. And when God selects you, you can't run from him. Uh, I'm talking to some folk in the back that tried to run. Uh huh. You tied your shoes up and said, you know what, God, I'm going to answer you when I get ready. And God says, oh, you think so, huh? He was in your car before you got in your car and said, well, since you want to ignore me, let me ride with you to work. Come on here, somebody. And since you act like you ain't going to answer the call to preach, let me walk with you on while you're on a regular job to show you that when I selected you, one thing you got to understand that the owner always know what he created and if God selected you you can't run from the master selecting you are God's choice you are his pick you are his pick and when God picks you, huh, you can do what other people do. Ha, oh, huh, ha, huh, yes. I ain't never been able to get away with trouble. I ain't never been able to cause trouble in people's lives. Ah, uh, because when God selects you, there's some stuff he will forbid you to do because you are his pick. I don't know who's in here depressed today, but you've been selected. I don't know who's been on the verge of losing their mind, but you've been selected. I don't know who's going through in their marriage, uh -huh, but you've been selected. And you know you've been selected by the level of hell you've been in. Please be seated for, for we lose it. When you've been selected, sometimes you can feel like you've been singled out. Why do they always keep choosing me? 
Why do I always keep getting blamed for? Why are they always bringing my name up in the conversation? I don't even know them like that. They live in another state. How did my name get to another state? How, 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 how? Tell somebody, say you've been selected. Because you're special to God. You've been special to God, and that's why you've been selected. You're selected because you're special to God. I'm special to God, and I've been selected. You're selected because you're special to God. You're special to God, and you've been selected. You're selected, and you've been special to God. You're special to God, and you've been selected. And whenever you get to the realization where you realize God had to choose me simply, you ready? Not because of what I could offer him, but because he loved me so much. It's not about your looks. It's not about your gifting. It's not about your creativity. All of that is good, but God, God just happened to pick, 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 pick and choose you. And he chose you on purpose. Um, he chose you on purpose. God did not make a mistake when he chose you. When he chose you, he chose you with all of your issues and said, I'm going to use you even if you got a problem with cussing. I'm going to use you even if you can't control your body. Uh, I'm going to use you even if you can't put them cigarettes down and that vapor. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I'm going to use you, yes, Lord, even with your little sneaky ways. Come on here, somebody. I'm going to use you. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. God knows what he selected. Come on here. And you got the nerve to say, Lord, how in the world are you going to use me to get that done? I know how he going to use you because he going to use you with the issues you got. That made you a recipient to be selected. You ain't never going to have it together to be used for the master. God will take broken pieces and use them. That's why he is the potter and you will always be the clay because he's going to mold you. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. We might lose it. I don't want to lose it. Ah, uh, look at your neighbor and say, he going to use you, baby. He going to use you. He going to use you. He going to use you. He going to All right, let's go. Verse 6. Can we get into it now? Somebody say go deeper. All right. All right. All right. When Jesus saw him lying there in that condition, um, he, it wasn't enough for him to select him, but he had to, he, had to, he had to go ahead and get into debate with him. Now, Jesus is not asking him what's wrong with him because he doesn't know. He's not asking him because he doesn't know. <laughs> He's asking him to see where his mind and spirit is. And sometimes God will ask you questions that don't make no sense. God will ask you stuff like, do you love me? You're like, well, what's Will you serve me? Well, I'm on my way to serve. It's not that he doesn't have the answer because he's omniscient. Ah, yes. Now, he's everywhere at once and he's all-knowing. So now he knows that. So he asks you that because he wants to know your response, though he already knows. <laughs> uh, so he says now, so Mario, he says this. Mother Carmen, this is what he says. Tanya, he says this. This is what he says. Ramelda, he says, he says, all right. Do you want to get well? <laughs> Can I take my time? <laughs> Do you want to get well? I don't, I don't even know if I hear any amens. <laughs> Do you want to get well? Can I give you a point, too? All right, let's go. Let's go. Um, I can't help you. Um, 
if you don't want to help yourself. Somebody get point two down. I can't help you if you don't want to help yourself. This was a sincere question. Jesus knew, Brother Greg, that not every sick person wants to be healed. And that some are so discouraged that they put away all hope of being healed. You got some folk that been there for years that said, I ain't never, ever going to get healed. I just came years ago, but it does not look like it's going to happen for me. It, it don't look like it's going to turn out in my favor. Come on here, somebody. It does not. The odds are stacked against me. And when you're around a bunch of sick people, you start acting sick. When you're around a bunch of complainers, you start. When you're around a bunch of babies, you start acting like a. And this is why you got to be careful who you're around because you're going to act like who you hang around. Your grandma said that birds of a feather. So he's around a bunch of people that are complaining and he naturally takes on the same spirit they got. Oh, oh, I'm trying to get some of y'all to move out to projects because you're around a bunch of people who are content being broke the rest of their life. You got to move, baby. You got to move. It ain't that you're stupid. It's not that you're crazy. You just around a bunch of people who don't want a whole lot with their life. Come on. And that same negative energy, negative spirit that got on, that was on them, got on you because you've been around it. Sometimes you got to change your environment, change your scenery and say, you know what? You can have them leftovers. I'm sick of this. Come on here, somebody. I can't deal with you. I'm tired of hearing you cuss. I'm tired of hearing you complain. God got to have more for me than this. Sometimes you got to walk around your apartment and say, this is too small for me. I deserve a five bedroom with a backyard and a little cute puppy. Y'all ain't going to say that to me. Sometimes you got to speak over your own life and stop remaining content with the issues of other people just because they didn't want nothing. Don't mean. Come on here, somebody. Just because mama's sick don't mean I got to live sick. For what? That's why God had some of y'all move to Georgia. Get on the plane. Uh, pack all your stuff up. And go somewhere you've never been before. Because I'm sick of you being in the same environment. Most of depression comes from your. The first thing I ask somebody if they're going through depression is who's around you? What environment are you in? Who you've been talking to? Because if you're going home to the same old house around the same negative people, talking about the same negative stuff, then you're going to be just like the environment that you're in. Come on here, somebody. But for at least 30 of you, the Lord says, I'm about to push you out of a depressing environment. Oh, I feel somebody in the back going to get it. I'm about to push you out of a depressing environment into better. Somebody shot better, 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 better. And in order to get to better, you got to cross through bitter. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here today. It said in order to get to better, you got to cross through bitter. You can't ever get to better if you ain't dealt with the waters of bitter. Come on here, somebody. Because God said, why would I give you better and you didn't know how to handle the season of bitter? Because you will mess up better if you have not been through bitter. I'm walking through bitter. I'm living in bitter. I'm content in bitter. <laughs> I'm lying here in bitter. I wake up in bitter. I go to work in bitter. I drive with bitter. I talk on the phone with bitter. I text with bitter. And when Jesus shows up, he says, better's here. I don't know how much you complain, 
But one day, Jesus showed up and says, I don't want to hear no more about bitter when better comes. Mm. Your problem is you thought better should have been your way. But better is always going to be his way. And sometimes your better won't look like his better. Because his better has a plan and strategy attached. Your better is temporal. Come on, here, somebody. And sometimes you got to be willing to, 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 to trust God even when you can't trace God. Sometimes you got to be willing to trust him when you can't find out where he is. Sometimes he'll make it look like you're still in the waters of bitter. But he'll be standing there saying, come on, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. You're almost at better. Oh, God help me today. I hope y'all get it. <laughs> Jesus, because Sarah knew that this man was losing. He knew he was losing hope. <sighs> wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here it is. Here it is. He's losing hope. You'll be amazed at the number of people um, that have come and gone, you ready, through this church and blamed it on the church. You ready? You ready? You ready? And never wanted to get better themselves. And so I got a problem with that because you got some people that would blame you and say, well, you didn't give me everything I needed. Yes, Lord. But when the Holy Ghost gave me something to prescribe for you, uh -huh, you ignored it and thought you had your own remedy. And now that your own remedy did not work and you still sick. Mm, and you still sick now you want to point the finger at the church and say the church is the reason I am like I am now everybody in the church ain't perfect uh, but I'll be darned if you blame another thing on the church and you don't even want to help yourself When you don't get care for yourself, you ready? You'll blame everybody but your lack of effort. When you don't get care of yourself, somebody ought to post it. I'm talking to you. When you don't get care of yourself, you'll blame everybody but your lack of effort. Bro, bro, better standing before you, and uh, um, you ain't giving this no more effort, huh? You just gave up. You've been here this long, right? And you just quit. You didn't quit on everybody here. You quit on yourself. When you quit on yourself, you quit on your family. You quit on your kids. You quit on your whole bloodline. Forget what God's doing through your bloodline. Forget what he's doing through your, your pedigree, your lineage, your generation. When you quit on yourself, you quit on people you haven't even seen. Sometimes you got to know the reason why you're still going is because there are at least 30, 20, 40, 50 generations after you that need what you put in the earth now. I am a direct recipient of my great, 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 great grandfather who was a preacher. And because the seed was in him and he planted it, he planted it in his son. And his son planted it in his son. And then his son planted it in his son. And then his son planted it into the battle gene. And then it went from the battle gene to the Buckner gene. And then from the Buckner gene through the battle gene. And then it went from that gene to that gene. And so I'm a recipient of what they planted. And because they didn't give up, I'm standing into what they did. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here today. The only reason that I'm here is because somebody helped blaze a trail for me. You didn't pick yourself up by your own bootstraps. You didn't get here by yourself. Baby, somebody prayed for you. I'm almost done. Y'all might get to Sizzler early today. It ain't open no more. Don't even worry about it. 
It ain't even open no more. Don't even worry about it. That was a smoke screen to get you to keep listening. I was in Puerto Rico and saw a sizzler. I said, a sizzler? Well, ain't nobody saw no sizzler in a while. Yeah. Y'all don't even worry about it, y'all. Um, I can't help you if you don't want to help yourself. And because you have a lack of effort, you quit on yourself and blame other people. And it's strange when you blame better. You got to stop blaming better. Some of y'all look through the lenses of bitter so much to where you cannot recognize better when it comes. And so you've been through so many broken relationships. So many people have taken your heart, taken your body. Well, you gave it to them. You, you, you gave it to them. Uh-huh. You gave it to them. And you walking around here talking about ain't nobody going ain't nobody good enough for me. Don't nobody look the way I want them to look, huh? Don't don't nobody don't nobody make enough money for me. Don't nobody and you keep looking through bitter lenses. You got better, right? Better might be right in your face, but because you're so used to toxicity and so used to chaos in your life, you don't know how to break out of the shell and the mode of destruction. You gotta get out of this bondage of lies and look for better. I think it's time to go deeper now. Verse 7 says, all right, here's his response. Jesus said to you, you want to get better, right? So here's his response, Kyra. The invalid replied, you ready? I have no one to help me into the pool. When water is stirred. When I'm trying to get in, someone else goes ahead of me. There's a bunch of things that I can talk about here. Um, um, physically, he's so close to the pool. I, I did some study. He don't need nobody to help him. Oh, that's okay. I'm going to go over here. He, if he rolled over two good times. Two good times. Just two rolls. It ain't even a twin bed. It's just two. <laughs> He's in the pool. And they're laying by the pool. And he right by the pool. Some of y'all are right by some stuff. And you complaining. Because nobody will help you get in what's next to you. If what you're, you're so close to it, if you stretch your arm out, you'll grab it. But because you are so spiritually lost, you think that what you've been praying for is further than what you thought when God is saying, if you get in the spirit, you can reach. Come on here, somebody. What you've been praying for. I'm going to take my time today because you're going to get this. Can I give you point three? Get mad, get mad all you want, get mad all you want. Here's point three, and I'm just going to say it, point three, stop being overly sensitive. I don't know who needs to hear that today. Stop being overly sensitive. <laughs> the crippled man assumed Kyra. He assumed Jesus knew how things worked at the pool of of, 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 of Bethsaida. And he explained to Jesus, why is it that people keep going in front of me? Quite naturally, the man um, was so close to the pool that he didn't even have to ask that question. 
The man's answer implies the popular belief that whoever stepped immediately after him, after the pool was bubbled, then they would get healed. And so evidently, he kept looking over so much at who was in front of him that he forgot that he was that close. All he could say is people keep going ahead of me. That's too sensitive, though. That's too sensitive, though. Jesus, um, 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 I think he thought Jesus would have said, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry people keep going ahead of you, buddy. I'm sorry they keep stepping in front of you, man. I'm so sorry you you had how oh, go by shy you had 38 attempts and it did not work out. Oh God, I ain't gonna talk about what attempt you did, but he had 38 attempts, and I'm sorry they keep going ahead of you. But can I pause and interject parenthetically and said some of y'all let some folk go ahead of you. Cause when you lose hope, you start getting content. Man, it ain't worth it. Go ahead. It ain't worth it. Y'all go ahead. I ain't, ain't nothing going to happen for me. It ain't going to work out for me. I'm not going to get a job. I'm not going to get promoted. I'm never getting married. I'll never have kids. Go ahead. I'll never find a church where they actually love me because I came with the wrong perspective and I'm looking for the wrong thing there anyway. Can we talk today? Okay, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Um. God's not raising a bunch of sensitive mimosas. If everybody talks to you and offends you, you too. If everybody tells you no causes a nervous breakdown, you too. That's why the first thing God told Joshua before he conquered the land of Jericho was be strong and courageous. You cannot be weak and say that you are my child. He's too sensitive. He hasn't got to heal because he's too sensitive. And he can't even get in the pool because he keeps focusing on what people did to him. It's 2023, you got to get past what they did in 2010. It's 2023, you got to get past what they said last week. It's 2023, you got to get past what they did in 2018. Come on, hear somebody. Uh, I, 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 I need you to be a little bit stronger. Now, I'm not minimizing your pain, but I am saying at some point, you have got to be a little bit more stronger than that. Now, if you're overly abusive with your words, then who are you to tell somebody they're being too sensitive? I didn't forget you. I, I'm not talking, I, I, I'm talking from the standpoint he's too sensitive because he's holding on to everything somebody did to him over a period of time. But some of y'all, you stood up, yeah, he too sensitive. Yeah, he too sensitive. But you the main one dishing out negative words. Cussing people out and getting mad and angry with them. Talking about, oh, you too sensitive. No, no, I'm not too sensitive. But I can say this since I'm a human. Uh, your words hurt me. Uh, come on here, somebody. And, 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 and who are you to dictate how I'm going to react to what you said about me negatively? The devil is a liar. I'm sick of people talking to me and treat me any type of way. And then they want to tell you how you are to behave after they done tore you down like you were some little dog on the street. It's going to take me a while to recover from what you did. Yeah. 
it's going to take a while to recover from that. Can't cuss nobody out at dinner out loud and embarrass them and then expect them to open up their arms for a hug the next day. The, uh, the devil is a liar. And I think we need to pause and start giving some people some time to recover. Come on here, somebody. Some time to get things together. This is a generation that likes to rush, 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 rush back into a relationship. Rush to get another job. Rush to get another kiss. Rush to get another hug. But you never recover covered from what somebody else did to you and this is why you're having a mental breakdown because you never went and got a massage you never went and saw a psychologist you never went and told your pastor and you're holding everything in looking crazy because you have not properly healed This is not a pass for some of you who talk about people like a dog and then say, they say this ain't a pass for you. Don't you take this as a pass so you can go back home and continue to mistreat them and abuse them and do what you used to do to them. This is not a pass. Come on here, somebody. Yes, because I hear the Lord saying, you ain't got to be mean to be holy. Yes, a sign that you got the Holy Ghost is a sign that you'll be nicer to people. And when I was growing up, they thought that you had to be mean to be saved and to have the Holy Ghost. But when you got the Holy Ghost, it's uh, the the nicer you become is a sign that the Holy Ghost has been working on being mean and treating people mean. If you got any evidence of the Holy Ghost, you'll open the door for people. You'll pray for people. You'll shake their hand at the door. You'll give them a hug. You'll give them a kiss because the Holy Ghost will make you nice. Anybody happy that the Holy Ghost changed your temper? That's me. That's me right there. Anybody happy that the Holy Ghost changed who you were? Come on, that's me right there. Anybody happy that the Holy Ghost changed the way you talk? I was on the verge of cussing you out again. But when I got saved, the Holy Ghost says, no, nah, there's another way you can handle that. You ain't got to ride up to the job and say, hey, it is what it is. You getting too old for that. You got to worry about life insurance and kids. You got to handle stuff differently now. And so some of y'all need to rely on your Holy Ghost to get you through negative demons on your job because some of y'all was on the verge this week of walking down from floor 7 to floor 3 to tell somebody I really can't stand you and I wish I, I ain't gonna talk to nobody you had a bunch of negative words you was about to say but the Holy Ghost says nah don't even go to the elevator go back to your cubicle and sit still because you ain't on that level no more. I gotta go. You gotta go. All right. Hi, oh Baba Saya. Listen to me. Whatever you do, whatever you do. Whatever you do, take a lesson from Lot's wife and don't look back because some of y'all are on the verge of looking back and I know I love the Lord and I got the Holy Ghost and I'll run and I'll shout but the devil has a way of getting people to make you so mad you're like you know what forget this let me take my shirt off and get them a piece of my mind because I'm sick of them getting on my nerve oh but the Lord says hold your peace and let the Holy Ghost I feel it right there fight your battle yeah yeah I'm on your neighbor and say hold your peace Ah, yes. I'm too anointed to be trying to fight you. I'm too gifted to be trying to hurt you. I, I got too much going for me, for, for me to lose my mind. I'm going to let God handle you. 
and when God handle you, he has a way of bringing you back to me and apologize for what you've done. I'm going to keep my character together. I feel like James Brown, you ain't going to take me out of character. You ain't going to make me act a fool today. I, I got too much going on for me, for me to lose my mind on the devil on my job. Somebody shot it, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody shot it, yeah. Shot it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, shot it, yeah. Shot it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shot it, yeah. Touch with people and say, I got to get stronger this year. I got to. Now look back at them and say, I'm tired of you being weak. Come on. You better. Come on. I'm tired of you being weak. Come on. Yeah, my mind say, I'm tired of you being weak. Come on here. If you don't, come on. If you don't get yourself together, the devil going to run all over you, baby. You got to have, you got to have enough zeal and tenacity to make it through what the devil trying to do to you. Stop laying down, letting the devil do what he want to do. You are, the old saints would say, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Y'all remember that song, do you? They'll holler, I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier in the army, the army of the Lord. Elbow your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. You're a soldier in the army of the Lord. Don't lose your mind. Don't you lose your character. Don't you lose who you are. Don't you lose your peace. Don't you lose your mind. Don't you lose your relationship. Don't you lose your job on a sobbing little devil. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. In the army. What blew me away is point four. God's not going to entertain your excuses. Why is he not going to entertain your excuses? Because can I give you verse eight? You ready? Jesus, Alicia, said to him, y'all listening? He said, get up. I'm going to just let that sink in. He said, get up. Get up, man. Get up. And then he went further, Brother Terrence, and he said, pick up. Oh. He said, get up. And pick up. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm laying down. And he says, get up. Pick up. Okay. Pick up. All right. You only pick up that which you don't intend on lying on anymore. He could have just said, get up. But when he said, pick up, that means that I'm never, oh my sire, I'm never going to lay here again. Because if I get up and I pick up, what you picking up, Pastor Dwight, what you picking up? I'm picking up the mat I've been lying on for 38 years. So, 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 here it is. The mat had never been 
moved in 38 years. So my theological quandary here, my question with the text, is how does a mat stay in the same place for 38 years? A storm could blow a mat. Some of these sick people can move the mat. Some old negative family members can pull your mat. But God said the reason why the mat never left is because he was always laying on the mat. And you cannot move what you're laying on. You can't be trying to scoot into the, the, one of the problem was is that he was trying, Elisa, to get into the pool with the mat that he was on. And as long as he had the mat underneath him, it hindered him from rolling over to the pool. And God says, your problem is, is that you're right next to the pool, but the healing is for you and not the mat. What are you trying to bring with you that you should have left a long time ago? I'm not I'm not going to sympathize with you, bro. You want folk to sympathize with you, but you don't want to make any adjustments. So Jesus said, if a cord of three strands is not easily broken, then I got three, three, three little different phrases for you. Get up, pick up, and, and, and walk. All right. All right, all right. Let me let me do this. Um, um, uh, this this is. Let me do this. Let me get this here. This is this is this is my mat. This is my mat. Um, I've been laying on my mat. P- pick up your mat. When you're weak, you're still strong enough to carry the thing you've been laying on, <laughs> but you've been treating. The thing you've been laying on like it's stronger than you. So Jesus shows him that if you pick up that which you've been laying on, I'll show you that you had the power to conquer what's been controlling you for 38 years. So I need you oh, I feel it, to pick up the mat. You ready? Uh, and, 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 and walk. I realize Brother Greg, when I picked it up and I carried it, Marie, it wasn't really that heavy no more. And the more I walked, the lighter it got. And and I kept walking until it got lighter. I kept walking until the drugs addiction wasn't that bad no more. I kept walking until I stopped desiring to sleep with people. And I kept walking until I dealt with my anger issues. And I kept walking until I put the cigarettes down. And I kept walking until my low self-esteem left. And I kept walking until I stopped believing. And, And before you know it, I'm getting to the end of the road. And I'm really, I don't even really need his healing is now entering into his body. Because what he was laying on made him sick. All right. I'm laying on what's making me sick. And I'm wondering why people won't help me in. And everybody walks past me, he's looking at me like, hey, bro, you look perfectly healthy, but that's a sick match you on. 
In fact, that mat got disease and sickness on it. That was somebody else's mat. Uh, and you just picked any mat that was by the pool and you laid on it and you caught your sickness because you laid on something that was already sick within itself. And then you stayed on the mat for 38 years and went to sleep and woke up in the morning and then went to sleep and woke up in the morning with a headache and woke up in the morning with high blood pressure and went to sleep with doubt and lost all hope and it's the thing you've been laying on that's been making you weak and Jesus said uh, if you can pick up this mat and and conquer the mat um, um, that's an essential piece of your healing Some of you are sick now because you won't detach from what's been been your crutch. This mat might be pornography. Might be drugs. Might be weed. Some of y'all anointed, but you can't stop smoking. Might be sipping. Can't go out without having a drink. And while we talking about mimosas. We just got to have a sip of something. We just got to have a little drink when we go out. We can't just eat a couple of tacos. We, we got to have a little sip of something. And y'all ain't going to talk to me here. That, so we can look and fit a part of something. Come on here. Maybe, maybe, maybe this mat might be that that relationship you're in and you're not married but because you shared so much body fluid together <laughs> you can't separate yourself because you got kisses of them on you uh, y'all ain't gonna help me today and they got kisses of you on them Ah, uh, you trying to go to church but that flesh keep calling you you remember the song that was on and the beds you was in oh y'all ain't gonna talk to the preacher just acting like I ain't talking to you you remember what they had on and they perfume and they cologne and they little oils and they wear cologne they wear oils had their oils on and then and, and you remember all of that stuff you shared and this is your mat it really hurts when you're that anointed that's why God said to Joseph or Pharaoh said to Joseph before he entered the palace you got to take off them prison clothes because this in the palace we don't recognize that old stuff you got on and so now so now I'm carrying around who I am and my sexuality I really don't know because this Matt confused me <laughs> and now it makes me like this and that. I like everything now. And so now the mat represents a false god because you start coming to church and then you, you pulled out your crystals and you, you done made a little altar on it and put some bones. You don't even know where the bones came from. You just got a plate and put some bones in a plate and then put some fire on it. You done made up your, erected your own god. Just made something up to worship. Oh, my Matt represents poverty. Nobody in your family went to college. Nobody got a good job. Nobody did right with their money. And since you got a good head on your shoulder and wisdom, the devil's trying to hand you. You got to be careful of transgenerational demonic match that get handed down from one generation to the other. And since they can't do right, they hand it to you. And then you got it and you don't know what to do. So you hand it to your kids. And then you do it because your mama did it. And then y'all come here, daddy. Come here, Mark. Come here, Gerald. Y'all come here. Come here. Come on. Come on to the stage. Quick, quick. Come on. Come on. Stand right there. Stand right there. This is what happens. This is what happens. You stand in front of him. You stand in front of him. Here, here. This is what happens. This is what happens. The mat represents a curse. And then if you don't get delivered from the curse, the curse will go to them. And then you hand the curse to Mark. And then Mark hands the curse to Daddy. And then what happens is I get the curse. And then the curse goes back up this way. And then it goes that way. And what happens is, is the curse becomes a cycle. Stay right there. I'm almost done.
But today the Lord says the same, same thing that caused you a curse. I'm going to turn it into a blessing. What they did to you huh, is going to work in your favor. So since they handed me a curse and I did right by God, when I touch it, it becomes a blessing for me. Because whatever I touch prosper. So now it transforms and metamorphosizes into a blessing. And I work the blessing. And the blessing manifests itself. And it's no longer a curse. And it's now a blessing. And so then I take the blessing and then hand it and then hand it to my kids. And now my kids hand the blessing. And then the blessing gets in the back and goes back up the line again. Because for some of you in here, you got to understand that God said as of today, I'm turning transgenerational curses. I'm done. Into transgenerational curses. I said I'm training transgenerational curses into blessings. Elbow your neighbor, we gotta go. And say neighbor, neighbor, everything in your family just changed. It used to be a sick mat, but now the mat gonna work for you. It's gonna be a blessing to you because now you realize that if I pick up my mat, and I begin to walk then the Lord who is on my side shall not allow me to fail look at your neighbor and say neighbor let's get ready to go home but the Lord said whatever broke you before will never break you again this is the last Sunday you come to church depleted on the verge of losing your mind. I feel the Holy Ghost here. Can I get y'all to push me a little bit? Can I get you to push me? Come on. I need somebody to push me here. I heard the Holy Ghost. He said to tell 20 of you in here that I'm getting ready. Come on. I said, I need y'all to push me here. He said, I need 30 of y'all to come on to the front real quick and help push the preacher. I gotta give it his word. The Lord said that whatever broke you before will never break you again. I need y'all to push me here. I feel the anointing of God. Somebody say, I'm a pusher because I'm a natural born pusher. Somebody shot push me. I'm, come on, shot, yeah. Somebody shot, I'm almost there. Put your head back like a preacher and said, yeah. Shotty, yeah, yeah. Shotty, yeah, yeah. Act like you a preacher in here. Shotty, yeah, yeah. Shot, I got my man, and it will no longer control me. I need y'all to push me. Come on. Somebody say, preach, boy, preach. Come on, say, preach, boy, preach. Come on, say, preach, boy, preach. I feel the hand of God that's all over your life. Somebody shot this my season. This is my season. I will no longer come on. Somebody shall preach. Come on. I will no longer allow the devil to steal my joy. Take me higher. I will not allow the enemy to steal my weapon. The Bible says that the weapons and the warfare are not carnal to the pulling down and the stronghold can I get a amen take me higher he said he who begins a good work in you shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ take me higher I am the head and not the tail I am above and not beneath I am the lender and I am the not a power. Take me higher. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. No weapon. Take me higher. Somebody shot. If the Lord be for me, who can be against me? 
take me higher. Whoever was against you is about to work for you. Somebody shout. just see the man who had the mat when he went back to his community they looked and said what happened and all I could hear him saying is no more mat no more mat touch three people real quick and say no more mat no more crutches no more lies no more scandal no more ignorance no more scandal no more pain, no more match. I gotta go back to where God has brought me from. I, I gotta go back to where the master has brought me from. Somebody step into your purpose. Take three steps forward and say I'm in my purpose. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in joy. I'm walking in love. I'm walking in mercy. I'm walking in grace. I'm walking, I'm walking. Somebody walk around real quick and say, I can receive my healing. I can receive my victory. I can receive my newness. Somebody shot glory. Somebody shot it. Yeah. Somebody shot it. Yeah. Somebody shot it. Yeah. Shot it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shot it. Yeah, yeah. Shot it. Yeah. I just feel like we need to give God 30 seconds of a praise because this is our no more match praise. One, two, one, two, three, go. said that blessing that was coming August 1st is about to start right now somebody praise him go
somebody shout miracles. That's what's about to happen in your house. If you receive it, praise him on a miracle. I need a miracle right now. I said praise the Lord for a miracle right now. Come on and let go and lose your mind and praise the Lord for a miracle. Go, go, go. I say it's over with. The curse over my life is over. The lies over my life is over. The poverty over my life is over. The brokenness over my life is over. The pain over my life is over. The bitter season is over. The hurtful word is over. It's over.
God said it's going to be a whole new season for you. Old things have passed away. All things become new. It's over. Oh. Hey! Head top. There's an anointing on both of y'all. Oh, my God. Wow! Oh, way about shot. Who hurt you? But God said it's over. You'll never do that again. You'll never do that again. I don't know what you came in here with. Well, you need another touch. Oh, oh, you need another one. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. He touched that high side the high. Hey, you gonna get it? Ah, yeah. It's over. I touched that 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 door shy. Oh. God said he's seen your tears and heard your prayers and the affliction the devil's been throwing on you is over with in the name of Jesus you won't go back to that house in depression you will not stay in a room locked up you will not give up on your dreams and what God gave you millions of people need you and when I lay my hands on you God said you're going to feel the lift. Whoa. Let them rest. Let them. Oh. hands on them again that have gone through grief she lost a mother like you lost a mother and you need to touch a somebody of know what it's like to be in that position I declare that the answers and the questions you have that God would give you solace and peace in the midst of what you're in and as we lay our hands on you we say the devil will not attack you and beat you up anymore with depression. When you rise, you're going to pick up your mat and walk. Oh!
right, listen. This family right here, I don't know what you stand in need of, but the Lord said it's already done. There are some people the Lord said owe oh, y'all apologies. And they coming next week oh, for what they did to you. I speak it over your life now. That your latter days. I said your latter days. I said your latter days shall be greater. Sorry, y'all. But this is how it is when the Holy Ghost show up and start moving. Hey! There's some sort of relationship that you just got in or something you considering but the Lord said flee it's no good for you today the Lord saved your life don't know who it was or what you were connected with or what was trying to happen but when I lay my hands on you the Lord said it's going to flee seven different ways. Hear me. He also said, stop thinking low of yourself. Don't you let self-esteem rule you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. And your pastor had to tell you this. Because if I didn't tell you this day, you wouldn't have thought that you were beautiful. And you would have listened to the words of people that were around you. But God said, when I made you, I ain't have to change nothing. Because everything was the way I wanted it to be. When I lay my hands on you, receive confidence. gotta go but hungry people keep coming to the church because they're tired of church as usual they want to feel the holy ah, the type we grew up on woman of God the Lord told me to tell you I don't know if you preach but he said he needs you to start declaring his word you are a prophet and the Lord said I need you to start declaring my word I just want to lay my hands on you come here come here come here you got an anointing for women men but you're a prophet I don't know there's some women in here sick if you lay hands on them, they'll get healed right now. I'm just confirming what God already has on your life. Ah. Woo. Give her a fresh glory. Give her a fresh anointing. Give her a fresh walk. A fresh mind. And for everybody the Lord said that stabbed you in the back, he said, I'm going to handle them. You preach my word. You declare my word. You do what I call you to do. Don't you look at what they did to you. Look to the hills from which come your help. Because your help come from the Lord. Hey, 
I birth the prophet out of you now in the name of Jesus. Oh! Tell them. Woo! We got to go. All right. Sister Nikki, wave your hand in the back. The Lord said he's got a promotion coming for you. You ready? And you're going to get it within the next two weeks. And it's going to be more money than you've ever made your whole life. And I also heard the Lord said there's a home housing. There's a home coming to you here. You've been praying for your own house and a better paying job. God says you are in the right place at the right time and I'm going to give it to you. Can I just lay my hands on you? Can you just get down here? There's a, a well-known business that's getting ready to call you to help. And God said they're going to put you in charge over everything because you've been faithful. And they're going to pay you three months in advance. And you ain't got to pay it back. It's just a bonus for you signing. Ah! I'm going to lay my hands on you. Come on. Everybody just shout promotion. When you get back up, your salary's up too. And I heard the Lord say, your credit score going up too. And I heard the Lord say, for the family members that didn't want you to come down, I'm going to raise you up in front of them. We got to go. Lift your hand. Father, we declare the name of Jesus that your word will not return unto us void. Thank you for meeting us today. Hey. Thank you for touching and healing hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. D, the Lord said there's a book you got to write. I don't know if you've written a book before, but there's a book you got to publish for women. I don't know what it's called, but I hear the Lord saying in the next few seasons, you're going to be writing. It's going to be writing books for you is going to become very lucrative. Not that you're doing it for that reason, but God says, as you put a pen to paper and write down and chronicle what God gave you, you're going to come up with a book and it's going to be a devotional book. And God says, it's going to sell out. It's child. And you're going to do multiple books. You're going to get a book deal. That's the season you in. He said, I want you to write. Because whatever you write, you lived it. And I see you traveling around speaking and doing seminars for women. Oh, my God. I see stadiums full of you talking to women just opening up your mouth and they're going to get healed by your voice receive it in the name of the Lord Father we thank you for your word today in Jesus name amen there might be somebody saying Pastor Dwight I need to accept Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior if that's you repeat after me say Father God 
in the name of Jesus I ask you into my heart ha, as Lord and personal Savior to renew and to guide me Satan I denounce you you got no power ah, no authority over me Jesus I now live for you in Jesus name amen amen there's somebody that's listening online or in person that says Pastor Dwight I need a church home I need a church home there is no such thing as a perfect church but there is a place you can join that can help disciple you and grow with you in the things of God you'll never find a perfect church you'll never find a perfect pastor do you hear me but God says the doors of this church are open if it's wrong to be out of church it's only right to be in church we don't have a whole lot that other churches do but one thing we got is the power and God meets us every single Sunday he meets us through the week and I'm joining you to be a part of that to connect with these beautiful and lovely people today if I'm over the room look at your neighbor and say if you need me to walk with you I will come on come on if you need me to walk with you I will come on look at the look at these beautiful women coming if the Lord called you and said I need you to join right now y'all come look at this come on here Look at these beautiful women that have come down. Amen. Amen and amen. Anyone else before we acknowledge these beautiful women that have come? Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. You will feel so much better when you finally make a decision to be a part of this church. Do you hear me? So look down your road one more time. It says, if you need me to walk down there with you, I'll walk with you. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's a couple more of you that 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 are fighting it, but I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna press it, but I want you to consider that if you keep waiting for things to get better, for you to come to church, they'll never get better. You have to come with your issues, with your brokenness, with your questions, with the frustration, with the stress. This is a hospital for sick people. Ebashaya. Hallelujah. Well, let's thank the Lord that three have come on today. I'm just going to ask them to give their name, to give their name, to give their name, and what drew them to come down, just real quickly, real quickly. Amen. Let's welcome our sister. Amen. Amen. Hey, everyone. My name is Ebony Jones, and I definitely need a new church home. And when I tell you the word was directly for me and what I'm going through in my life, I mean, I'm waiting on July 30th at this point. So Amen. I'm going to take up my mat. Amen. Let's thank the Lord. Amen. thank the Lord for that let's thank the Lord for that amen come on clap your hands for our new members on today amen sister Angela who has her hand up over there if you all would walk over there she's going to get your name and your information and all uh, everything pertinent concerning you amen let's receive our close uh, let me do this before our closing announcements come uh, if you did not have an opportunity to give uh, you can give still dollar sign Generation of Hope 
or you can text the word give, amen, dollar sign, generation. We just have a couple of announcements today. So our church picnic will be held next Sunday, July 30th at Oak, Oakhurst Park. Um, if you please sign up with Sister Moshe or Minister Todd um, at the end of service. If you are bringing a dish, please label your dish. Vegan includes pork, beef, for people's food allergies. Our next members cohort will begin next Sunday as well. to join the men's ministry on July 29th, this Saturday, to discuss Pastor Dwight's book, Five Things All Men Need. See Brother Mike to RSVP. Our second annual gas giveaway will be August 12th. We are in need of volunteers to come and assist us. We will meet here at the church at 7.30 a.m. and head over to the gas station. You are invited to start your morning off with prayer with us at 6.30 a.m. And on that same Zoom link, Pastor hosts his Bible study on Tuesday at 7 p.m. An additional announcement, this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., um, Brother Quentin will have choir rehearsal for the children. So the children will have choir rehearsal Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. That concludes my announcements. Please welcome the benediction. Excuse me, 9 o'clock for new members cohort. that was said, Father God. We ask that it rests deep within our spirits and with our souls, Father God. We ask that it is caused to make root in our lives, Father God, so that we may flourish, Father God, in your in your activities, Father God, in your gifts and in your purpose, Father God. Lord Jesus, we ask that everything that has gone out from our past to be put back in him. Lord, we thank you for safe travels as we go to our next destination. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. And thank God. You guys have a great day.